pleasant good evening to all my fans all over the world, well wishers, strangers, one and all. It's my pleasure once again to be back with you to share another good word. As I've said to you on all previous occasions, we are living in very tumultuous times, treacherous times, frightening times, and some may even say exciting times. However you define the times, I'm saying that a good word is an added bonus. And this channel will give you bonus after bonus every week, every time, because we believe that humanity should make the best of this thing called life. So as usual, we will share with you a motivational word, tell you about our services, do our presentation, and then remind you of our services. My motivational word to you today is to balance the scales of life. When you think of a scale, a wearing scale, and you think that one side is overloaded, it tends to topple over. And similarly in your life, if you don't balance the scale, certainly you will topple over. So my simple message, my simple motivational word to you is that you should do all in your power to strike that balance, because in all balance, chaos is the ultimate outcome. So, ponder on the word, reflect on the word, and allow it to guide your every action as you seek balance in your daily existence. As usual, we remind you of our services. I, Imo Ramises Bakari, the psychologist and life coach, is available to serve you every time once the request is made. We offer coaching sessions, counseling sessions, we offer workshops in a range of areas such as leadership, customer service, conflict resolution, communication skills, community development, youth development, marketing, management, our core area of psychology. We do a range of workshops, psychology and you, emotional intelligence and you, the role of psychology in business, uh, identity, we do things uh, such as uh, public speaking, all right? If you want to be a better public speaker, we can help you in that journey and we conduct a host of other workshops on your request and we are ready anytime such a request is made. All you have to do is to give us a call at one 778-5141 or email us at leadership with a difference at gmail.com. Once you email or call, book your appointment early, book it now, and we will be ready to serve to the best of our ability. So we expect your calls, we expect your emails, and of course our service will be there at your disposal. So the topic today is that Staying alive is the best strategy to maximize opportunities in life. We are, by nature, by design, is destined to grow in that space between birth and death. We should grow to the best of our abilities and we should also uh, do all in our power to enhance those God-given abilities. But in so doing, you know, balance will be a key. There has been a lot of literature on the work-life balance because many people struggle to find that work-life balance. You know, many people at the end of a day's work sometimes lack you know, energy to do you know, most other things. All right? And it is very critical if we are to be productive human beings, if we are to be happy human beings, that we strike that balance, all right? So hard work is always beneficial, but there's a, there's a saying, you know, you know, all work and no play, you know, makes Jack a dull boy. So as much as you have to work, you know, it must be in the splice, the recreation, the play, all right? Because in the Trinidad and the Caribbean context, as I said in previous presentation, a lime is not just a lime, there's a great psychological and physical value in people, you know, getting together, exchanging, sharing, 
socializing, eating, you know, having a nice meal, uh, drinking a nice drink. Of course, lots of Caribbean people take stronger beverages as people are across the world. But as in everything, balance is the key in so doing. All right? So we need to work hard, but we always need to find time and space you know, to recreate. Right? COVID-19 has affected that, but you know, people have been innovative. People have been having you know, virtual lines. You know. Those who are not having virtual lines, many people have placed greater emphasis in terms of exercise, and food choices, and you know, the rest, you know, the meditation, the prayer, all in attempt to strike a balance and to become more productive and to become you know, less stressed. Because as we all know, stress is indeed a killer. And in the Trinidad context and the Caribbean context, there is a saying, you know, walk do dead. You know, many Caribbean people use that statement. And that statement, walk do dead, is a clarion call for balance, you know. Many times I push hard and sometimes in the course of walking, sometimes, you know, moving into the night hours, I would just say, look, it's time to cut. I may not have completed all that I needed to complete, but I know that time has arise, has arisen where I, I needed to cut off because your body actually tells you it's time to, to cut. And when you, when you do not cut, you always pay a price. And that price could be sickness and then the, the extreme of that could be death. Many people have paid that price, you know, in terms of burning the candle at, at both ends, the midnight oil, you know. So without balance, you know, it can be detrimental, right? A few weeks ago, I participated in a, a World Happiness Summit conducted by the University for Peace in Costa Rica, your peace. And there was a British psychologist, you know, I didn't take his name, but all the same, if he's here in this presentation, you will know that I'm referencing this work. And he said in, in that presentation, he quoted some data where he stated that getting five hours or less sleep nightly increases one's mortality by 20%. So to strike that balance, you know, and to give yourself that uh, opportunity to maximize, you know, the progress of your life, getting sufficient rest is important. He recommended hours between seven to eight hours, all right? But when you look at a statistic where five hours or less increases one's mortality by 20%, that is indeed frightening. Mind you, some persons are made up differently and five hours may do, all right? Because as the guy rightly said in the presentation, if you get five hours of some sleep versus uh, seven to eight hours of, you know, sleep with a lot of disturbances, that five hours of some sleep would be more beneficial than seven to eight hours. But all things being equal, seven to eight hours of some sleep is the ideal uh, number of hours that you know, people should try to get. Because just think about that statistic as a guide. And in industry, on the roads, many, many accidents are caused by a lack of sleep. People pushing hard to achieve. But if you are not well rested, you, know, you cannot concentrate to drive properly. You cannot concentrate to work properly. So we need to be very, very, very conscious of that. So proper nutrition will always be an important requirement for striking that balance, eating from the eight food groups, and um, also uh, getting enough rest, uh, the six food groups, um, getting exercise, all right? In the previous presentation, I spoke about the New Star Principle. That's a very important guide in terms of proper nutrition, in terms of exercise, in terms of water, in terms of uh, sunlight, in terms of trusting God, in terms of air, in terms of rest, and in terms of temperance, all right? Those things are critical in terms of us trying to, to get that balance. And I remind you of that statistic. Five hours or less of sleep increases one's mortality by 20%. All right? So let us eat better. Let us sleep better. Let us live a bit more. 
without compromising our productivity, let us still be conscious of COVID-19. All right? Uh, let us pray and meditate and reflect to synchronize mind, body, and spirit. All right? I came across some literature sometime in the past where it was mentioned that, you know, trying to anchor yourself and center yourself and reflect contributes to enhancing longevity. So I'm saying that, you know, with those things in mind, you know, let us take all of the simple steps we can take and yet, you know, still strive to be productive to the best of our abilities, but recognizing that if we ignore the basics, the opportunities that we would like to maximize and capitalize on certainly would not come our way. Again, uh, a beautiful reference that the, the British psychologists use, you know, is that when we think of stress is really uh, a question of our bodies and our minds responding to demands placed on it. And oftentimes when we complain of stress, certainly it's because of our lack or inability to cope properly in managing those demands. We, we tend to feel overwhelmed. And a beautiful analogy was drawn by him where he said that you could look at, uh, think of stress as passing through uh, a container, all right? And when that container becomes overloaded, the, the resultant effects of stress would be biting, snapping, and even withdrawal. So certainly we can see that our, our container or pipe, if you want to use that, has become clogged, all right? And that has become clogged because of a lack of balance, because of a, a loss of focus and recognizing that as much as we need to be productive, sometimes, you know, rocking back, laying back, strategizing, thinking and planning might be more crucial to getting more done than being here, there and everywhere. You know, there is a saying, more haste, less speed. And many of us can attest to that. Sometimes you try to do so many things that it brings confusion into the picture. You also know that if you do things sequentially, you will get more done than trying to multitask. The brain isn't ideally designed to multitask, especially when enormous demands are placed on the brain. Some one of the activities that we are doing will be compromised in terms of quality. So for example, if you are driving, have to make a, a, a complicated driving maneuver and you carry on a conversation, the end result of that will be accident or death. You know, the research has shown that when you enter a conversation, it tends to lean to one side, taking a focus away from the road. So all of these things certainly is are indicative of a lack of balance in our lives. All right. So let us try to avoid our, our containers and our pipes becoming clogged. Because when we become withdrawn, you know, productivity and our ability to socialize obviously is out of the window. When we are biting and snapping, we are polluting the, the environment in which we work in terms of, you know, poisoning relationships and rubbing people the wrong way. So, find ways and means where, you know, you can relax, all right? Find means and means where you can read and enjoy a book. Find ways and means where you can just withdraw from the normal demands, take a break and then come again, all right? As I said in the quotation, balancing the skills of life is crucial to achieve those things. So there are, there are a number of fundamentals, some of which I've mentioned already, exercise, proper nutrition, prayer, meditation, um, do not underestimate regular medical checks, in that conditions can be picked up early, and in so doing, it will enhance your, your possibilities of staying alive, all right? If it is picked up late, sometimes the chances of surviving might be severely diminished. So, you know, many people in the Caribbean, the bulls that they never went to a doctor. Now, that is not the wisest thing in that, you know, you don't have to be necessarily sick to go to a doctor. But checking on yourself and knowing what is happening with you is very important. We have heard the Ministry of Health and other health practitioners across the world talk about doing your numbers. You know, it is very critical to know your blood sugar levels, your, your blood pressure levels, you know, your cholesterol levels, and a whole of other things, you know. Uh,
school mate of mine, a couple of days ago, was you know sharing a story with me, and you know he was saying that you know he was aware that you know, he was a hypertensive person, but notwithstanding that you know he, you know he loves a good drink, you know, and you know, one occasion he was hit it hard, punching, knocked up by beers, and he went to sleep. Got up the next morning, and his madam recognized his speech was slurred and his face was twisted. So fortunately for him, he, he you know, immediately sought um, medical attention and he had a favorable outcome. So he said to me, you know, he doesn't miss medication now. He takes it without fail, he takes a walk. And, and the question is, why not before? Why not you know, strike that balance before and avoid such an outcome? So for all of us, including myself, who, you know, is indeed a hard worker, but over the years, I have incorporated some stuff that I think has been useful to me. For example, you know, daily meditation, reflection, and prayer. I um, exercise on a regular basis. Our youth to this present point in my life, you know, and just you know, understanding my stress threshold and knowing how to manage that and keep it, you know, in context. Because I have known from experience that you know, when you push it too much. Obviously, the body weakens, the body becomes ill, and those things can be avoided because to maximize opportunities, we have to be healthy, we have to be energized, right? So it all goes back in terms of the proper rest, uh, with proper with, you know, regular exercise, and you know, everything improves, sleep improves, digestion, you know, excretion, mental acuity. Research has shown that, you know, the students who are actively involved in physical exercise and sports, they perform better than people who, you know, take away from that focus. In the Caribbean, among some, not all countries, but among some countries, among many people still, there is a feeling that sport is a by the way exercise, is a by the way um, activity. It's for those who are not too brilliant, but that is, you know, far from the truth. There are many top sportsmen who are also top academics. And the research data will show that, and if you look at, it from, look at it from a common sense point of view, if your blood is circulating better, if there's a higher level of oxygen flow, you know, if, you know, if that is happening, obviously you will be sharper mentally than if perhaps you, know, you, you lack exercise and that is poor, etc. That is pure common sense. And if you dig for the data, it supports the, the, the value and the usefulness of doing that. So all of those fundamentals certainly will contribute to that balance and putting us in the best possible position to maximize our opportunities. Another very uh, telling statistic that the British psychologist cited in this presentation is that in Britain, it costs the British economy $5.2 billion annually for people who are suffering from the effects of stress, anxiety, and depression. Let me repeat. That figure, $5.2 billion annually. All right? That figure is bigger than the budget of some countries, some Caribbean countries. All right? So that is a frightening um, statistic. And it's all as a result of people not balancing the scales of life. It's all as a result of people, uh, containers and pipes becoming clogged because they are trying to overachieve and do too much. In a previous presentation, I cited Steve Jobs on his dying bed when he made the comment that what is really important in life, I mean, he was bathing in billions of dollars, money was not an issue. But as we have heard over and over, money it doesn't equate to happiness, all right? A sense of purpose and, you know, the finer things in life, you know? And he said a good meal, talking with friends, a good laugh, you know? So as, as much as we do all, all as we do, we need to have those elements as simple as they may appear, but in the scale of things, they are really big. They are bigger than a lot of the things that people are fighting about. You know, when we leave the universe, you know, it's bare. Everything is bare. We're going back. We have clothes on that they are burying us in. But at the end of the day, all of the things that many people feel that make life spin, you know, those things really are insignificant if we don't balance the scale. You know. If we don't leave a, a legacy in terms of serious contributions 
that improve the human condition. Because that is the kind of legacy I think people should be striving for. Because as an active community worker, from a young boy to a grown man, I can say without you know, reservation that the level of happiness that one feels when you walk and help somebody and pull them out from a situation of despair or difficulty, it's an irreplaceable feeling, you know. And these are the kind of things that will, you know, to me, you know, everybody has a different philosophy as to what will bring happiness to them. But I'm saying that that is indeed a, a, a feeling and a, a way that, you know, money can buy, you know. So leave a legacy where, you know, long after you are gone, your work will live on and, and your work will continue to impact people in a way where, you know, they can be empowered, right? I heard a very beautiful presentation from the deceased Dr. Miles Monroe recently on YouTube where he was talking about leaders, you know. He said leaders do not seek power, but leaders seek to empower. So I don't like to quote the, the great late Dr. Monroe in making that statement. As we strive to maximize our opportunities in life, recognize from all that I've said, we need to stay alive. Because if we are not alive, we cannot do all the things that we would like to do. And sometimes the message comes to us sometimes when we get sick. Although we were busy before, when you are sick, you have to just take it easy and recover. And all of the things that you could not have put off, they had to be put off. So, to quote Dr. Monroe again, as leaders, and we are all leaders, because a leader doesn't really, you don't have to have a position to be a leader, but you have to be a person who is influencing others, and you don't need a position for that. And leaders do not strive for power, leaders strive to empower. So as we strive to stay alive, as we strive to balance the scale of life, let us remember the words of Dr. Monroe and that we should strive to empower. And everyone we empower, it creates a greater power in the world where humanity has a better chance to be happy. So I leave you with those words for today. I know the message was a powerful one. I know it resonated with you. And it's only fair that you subscribe to the channel it is only fair that you encourage your friends and family to subscribe to this channel. It is only fair that you help in any way possible, including financially, to make this channel the number one in the universe. And we call on you to make your financial contributions via the YP link on the description page of this video. So like, subscribe, comment, and share. And let us build this community to be a very powerful one in the universe. So balance the scale, and as you balance the scale, stay tuned for another message. Remember the services we offer, workshop sessions, counseling, coaching sessions. Just call us at 1 768 778 5141, 1 768 779 2544, or email us at leadership with a difference at gmail.com. So see you till the next presentation and continue supporting our channel. Thank you and bye.